Hello, my name is Steve Hobrecht, and I'm a program manager in the Azure IoT engineering team. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Azure IoT suite and building enterprise grade solutions with it. Azure IoT is part of the Azure set of services. In IoT, we often find customers pulling together multiple services to create the IoT solutions. The definition of IoT covers a broad set of capabilities and a broad set of technologies. And it can be a challenge for customers to figure out which is the right set of services to bring together to create their needed solution. So I'm pleased to introduce the Azure IoT Suite to you. What we're trying to do with the Azure IoT Suite is make it simple to get started with IoT and really meet you with the services you need where you are at today. Some customers have existing services and systems built to collect data from their devices, analyze that data, and integrate it with their business processes. Other customers are creating new devices or creating net new business models. Whether you've got an existing system or you're creating a new system, with the Azure IoT Suite, we help you stitch those services together that you need to build the solution that's right for you. And we help that scale from small numbers of devices at a POC all the way up to a pilot and production rollout that delivers value for you and for your customers. We know that putting together these services can be a big challenge. We have templates, examples, SDKs, and documentation that help you from data collection and ingestion in a world where devices are heterogeneous and may have a mixture of Windows, uh, Linux, iOS, Android, or other real-time operating systems. And you need to bring those together, collect all of that data, uh, and centralize it with your cloud services. Once you get secure, and connected devices that are bringing the data into the cloud. You want to perform rich analytics. It might be real-time analytics to do split-second decision-making, or maybe every few minutes you're checking on behavior and health of an ecosystem. Or you could be collecting data over time and performing big data queries and rich, deep machine learning algorithms to understand broader patterns about your business and change behaviors. It's important, though, in an IoT solution to understand the devices and the context for those devices that helps you model that data out. And the device registry provides ways for that metadata to be captured and shared and utilized at multiple points in the solution. We also provide these pre-configured solutions, helping stitch together services with code and samples that help create scenarios that match in a horizontal fashion the types of things that customers are doing and allows you to take that and extend it either to a vertical or a specific market or target and build your specific solution from our starting point. We also recognize that a lot of IoT solutions integrate with broader backend systems. So we provide models for rich integration, whether it's Dynamics or Salesforce, SAP, Oracle, other big data platforms or proprietary systems, office tools that users use to interact with tools and business and data. All of those things we see brought together on the back end of an Azure solution, and we'll provide guidance and templates as part of the pre-configured solutions from Azure IoT. What I'd like to show you now is a demo of the IoT pre-configured solutions and our first remote monitoring solution. Where I'm starting here is a provisioning portal that I've logged into with my Microsoft account and an Azure subscription. When I go to create, we offer a remote monitoring solution type. Coming soon, we'll have a predictive maintenance solution type. And we'll continue to extend other solutions as we see broad horizontal applicability of these solutions for IoT so that the Azure IoT suite can be used by more and more customers across a variety of scenarios. When I select the solution that I want, I can go ahead and add a name. I pick the Azure region in which I want it deployed. And the subscription that I have, which I want to run the services under. When I say create, we're going ahead and provisioning these services for you. It will take just a few minutes to get them all set up and ready and deploy our pre-configured solution code that gives you a full end-to-end -end example of a very generic remote mon monitoring scenario. And the first thing I've presented with is my dashboard portal. This is an example of the kind of heads-up display 
one might have in a remote monitoring solution. On the left side, I see a map that shows me the three points or the locations of the devices that I'm tracking that are connected into my backend services. On the right side, you can see the real-time telemetry coming from a device. In this case, we have a simulator that's generating some fake temperature and humidity data. But it gives you an example of how that data can come into the system, be visualized in near real time, about every 10 seconds in this case. And you'll also see a very spiky pattern uh, that we've generated some alarms so that we can capture threshold events and make the scenario a little bit real. On the back end side, we provide the source code for this device simulator. So as you take the solution and start to think about how it applies to your business and the devices you're monitoring, you'll be able to change it very quickly and easily to track the kinds of telemetry that you might want to send, the value ranges that you wish, and then change the alarms and thresholds to meet your business conditions. On the left bottom here, I've got the list of alarms. And I'll show you in just a minute how those alarms are triggered. And then I've got the average, which is again showing how I can quickly aggregate data that's come in from the telemetry of the devices and visualize it in my dashboard. Underneath the covers, I've got a device list, and this shows the simulated device that I've instantiated. I've got two instances here, device one and device two, with a little bit of top-level metadata, imagining that I've got a particular manufacturer and model number, serial number associated with those devices that I want to track. On the right side, I have richer metadata, uh, such as a firmware version of the system or the processor it may be running. All of this is metadata examples of the types of things that you could collect from your device, which is really useful in modeling out the behaviors, understanding the data over time, grouping devices together and such. Now, one of the powerful things about Azure IoT Services is that we allow two-way communication from the devices to the cloud and cloud back to the devices. So we've implemented an example here of sending commands from my cloud services in the IoT Hub back to these simulated devices. We've implemented a few examples of command types that you might have, for instance, in uh, a simple device, such as ping the device to see if it's responding, starting or stopping. And in maybe this case of a temperature device, I have a set point that I want to change on that device. When I click that command type, I simply give it a set point temperature that I wish and I go ahead and send that command. Down below, you'll now see I've got a pending message that's going back to that device. And as I refresh, I'll see the progress of that device connecting and getting the data from the cloud service and responding back with success. Yes, indeed, it has changed its set point temperature. Now, I mentioned the threshold rules that show up as alarms on the dashboard. We have a rules pane here where I can see I've got a rule for this device where I've set the temperature greater than 53 is going to generate my alarm. I may want to go ahead and change that. I can simply go to Edit Rule, change the threshold value, let's say, to 57, and I can save that value. I can quickly and easily change these rules here through the visual interface. And what we're doing under the back end is changing some services and a job we have deployed in Stream Analytics that is tracking the incoming values, matching it against the threshold, and generating my alarm if it turns out to be true. Finally, I've got a list of actions here. These are the types of things that I can trigger when my rule events occur. Uh, and in the case here, we have a send message and a raise alarm, which is what I use to add the list of alarms that I show on the dashboard. Finally, we allow you to go ahead and add additional devices to extend and expand this scenario. I can do two things here. I can add a simulated device, which is another instance of the simulator that we have. So if you want to implement multiple devices and show it scaling out a little more broadly, you can add multiple simulated devices. We can also add custom devices. Using our device SDK, I can build, again, either simulated devices, or I can build real devices and agents that connect into this cloud service. And now I can bring those and incorporate them 
in this solution that I have and explore and expand the opportunities to gather more realistic data for my business and understand how I might leverage these types of solutions uh, to change things. Let me go a little bit under the covers and talk about what we've deployed and provisioned uh, when I go ahead and start that solution. On the left side, as I mentioned, we have a simulated device. In this case, it's a C-sharp simulator running .NET. But we know that many devices won't be .NET uh, running devices. And so we've got agents to create Linux, iOS, Android, uh, and other types of operating systems, as well as support for other languages besides C-sharp, such as C and Java. We've then deployed an instance of the IoT Hub. This IoT Hub manages the two-way communication from the device to the cloud service and the cloud service back to the device and creates a secure direct channel between each device and the cloud. Behind that IoT Hub service, we've deployed an instance of Stream Analytics and created a job on that Stream Analytics instance that's taking those threshold values that I set in my user interface and deploying those into the job to track and watch the data as it comes in, detect the threshold event, and create an alarm event out of that. That alarm event then flows into an Event Hub instance that we've created, which is queried by a web job. That web job is running an event processor host that's pulling out the events that are created and doing something with those. In this case, we are sending the message up to the dashboard so that the human operator using the console could see the event and take the appropriate action. Those web jobs can be extended to run things like AppLogic applications that do simple workflows or more complex workflows and integration with other backend systems. We've deployed an instance of document DB. In the document DB, we contain the metadata that you saw in the device portal, and all the properties for each device are stored there and maintained there. And that can be extended very easily in really the key value pair model. We store all of the telemetry data in blobs. So while we surface the data and the graph in the UI, we're also storing that data on the back end. So you can create scenarios where you pull that data in through machine learning or other HD Insight tools to do richer analysis and historical data over time. And then finally, we've got a web application that's the dashboard that you saw. The code for that application will all be available on GitHub. So you'll be able to take that and start to modify it and align it to the types of snares that you're trying to deliver, uh, as well as extend it and add different things unique to your solution in your scenario. And then finally, we've got an Active Directory deployed where you can add users from your group who you may want to share your scenario with or collaborate in development with. And so you can securely communicate uh, with your colleagues and share your application. Finally, we expose Power BI. So the visuals that you saw on the dashboard can be naturally extended into Power BI. And you can create additional dashboards and drill in views and really create a rich user interface on top of the data set uh, to explore, depending again on the type of solution that you want to do with your monitoring. As I mentioned before, the goal of the Azure IoT suite and the pre configured solutions is really to get you started quickly. In a matter of a few minutes, you're able to spin up a complete remote monitoring application, all the services underneath, working end to end, running through the simulated telemetry, showing you how all those services come together and deliver the kind of solution that adds value to your business. You'll be able to take that, modify it, create some new rules and alerts, add devices, additional devices or custom devices that you have, and really understand what type of solution that you want to build from that as you go towards pilots and productions. The goal is to get you set up with all the right pieces and have you understand how to take that forward and really build things out uh, to full production. And that can entail things like fine tuning with specific rules and business workflows and integrations with back end systems, as well as rich visuals create dashboards and multiple views depending on the types of users that may interact with the tool. That's a quick overview of the Azure IoT suite and the pre-configured solutions. I invite you to come to internetofyourthings.com and get started. We have descriptions of everything I've showed here. We'll have links to documentation. We'll have links to the provisioning portal so you can go start right now 
with your solution and explore the services and the power that Azure has to offer. Thank you.